Greetings, this is Artie from Artifact Electronics. Some of you may be wondering why I have been absent from the uh, video scene for a while. And that is because workload increased exponentially and there were just a lot of things to do. But you may remember that this room, I had a bunch of music stuff in here and then I bought these pinball machines and converted this room to the uh, pinball room. Probably seen most of this. And uh, I had to move everything out of this room. It's uh, All the music stuff had to go somewhere. And I kind of tried to arrange things, put a bunch of computers up on over here. You've seen most of these featured in uh, videos. And then uh, I moved most of the music stuff into the actual workroom over here. It just kind of fit in here. And... Uh, But that still doesn't excuse why I didn't really excuse why I didn't do a video. I just I just didn't have the time. A and B, I couldn't find anything to repair. I mean the well kind of ran dry. I mean there was just there was nothing that even looked remotely interesting to repair. And then last week this happened. which uh, is a few miles from where I live. And as with all earthquakes, they're kind of unpleasant, even though I've lived in California and lived through some really good ones, but you never get used to an earthquake. The house groaning, everything shaking, and all sorts of breaking noises coming. But anyway, that happened at 7 a.m. in the morning. And uh, I was asleep at the time, as every self-respecting person should be. But then we started having a bunch of aftershocks and... Uh, well, anyway, I had to get out of bed and check the house. We had water, we had electricity, we had internet, everything seemed okay. Until I came into this room. This part of the room was a jumble of equipment on the ground. I mean, there literally was a pile of music electronics all over the place. So what happened here is uh, the rack in the middle you're looking at, it's sitting on the uh, rack case that's on wheels and then has this, uh, this case, the studio case for synthesizers. It's not super stable because I added wheels to it. But to make a long story short, the damn thing tipped over towards towards me as we're looking at it. And I mentioned I was living in California and there was the uh, ultimate law to fasten anything to the wall, to the floor, to make sure that it wouldn't fall over. And I've been pretty good about following that since I've moved to Utah. but. These got moved recently and, uh, yep, I never got to the part where I uh, secured any of this stuff. So again, the uh, rack in the middle you're looking at, the whole thing, I guess it's kind of top heavy with that thing sitting on top, tipped forward, crashed against the keyboard stand took down the keyboard stand and of course everything that was on it and uh, fortunately or unfortunately I didn't get to film what that looked like but uh, it was one of those situations where you come in you look at the situation you close the door and you you go away you just don't want to deal with it but anyway about a few hours later I did start to deal with it assessing the damage and just picking things up from the floor and trying to put things back and just trying to find out how much of my equipment got destroyed here. So let's have a look and see 
what the universe did to me on that day. So yeah, that whole middle rack came down. But surprisingly, not a whole lot happened to it. Buttons are still on. I've pretty much tested everything, plugged it in. Everything seems to work. The only guy who was really unlucky is the Duffer MS404. And what happened was he had the bad luck of uh, falling against something. We have four, of, uh, three of the pots, sh uh, the shafts sheared off, and a bunch of the uh, knobs, as you can see, are not in very good shape. I do have a pi pile of parts for those. But other than that, on this side, everything seemed okay and seemed to be working. If you look closely, get this into the light. Do you see those indentations in the organ bench? That's where the duck fur hit. Full force. That's what broke off the, the pot shafts and everything before taking down this entire keyboard stand over here. The uh, keyboard controller down there looked okay. There were some scratches on it and stuff, but uh, there was a lot of loose stuff in there when I picked it up. And uh, Two PCBs has, had basically been sheared off from their supports and a bunch of pots were broken. These two, because essentially the PCB was mounted to them and it just broke the pot, uh, the pot connectors off. I fixed that already. It was mostly a mechanical repair and it wasn't that interesting and it came back to life. The most obvious one was that key got chewed off. There's some key damage over here. I don't know if it shows up, but you know, there's black marks and wear marks all over this thing. And that guy pretty much escaped unscathed. Nothing happened to him. So the keys aren't a big deal. Again, I've, I've tested these guys and uh, they work. But uh, they, have, they have a bunch more scratches on them. Some of these buttons kind of got hurt. So they hit something. They're just scratched up though. No big deal. So really the... Uh, worst hit victim is the MS-404. And what we're going to do today is, uh, I mean it's difficult to test it because the shafts are broken off and what I want to do is see if there is a, an artifact way of repairing this and the artifact way being let's see uh, how much in place repairs can we do without having to go out and buy parts I mean, I bought this thing several years ago from Japan of all places. It wasn't working, but I got it back to working. And at the time I looked inside and the pots are kind of weird. So, so I'm not really looking forward to finding replacements for those, but I figured let's open her up, have a look inside and see what we can do. Ready to be operated on. And here's the pile of parts that I picked up from the floor. Three mangled buttons and three shafts. So let's open this thing up and see. I don't exactly remember why, why I said these parts were weird, but we'll find out in a second. Alright. 
so. All right, so the weirdness on the pots is not the pots themselves so much as the mounting, the extra reinforced mounting they have on the sides. They have these wings over here that point forward and that get soldered into the PCB and that's probably why these are still in there and didn't get ripped out because of the solid mounting. Normally these parts, I've looked in other Duffer instruments and they kind of, the parts look the same except this little support bracket here points backwards so that uh, you can see these supporting arms come back and be uh, soldered into the PCB behind the actual pot. But I guess because uh, space was at such a premium in this thing, they got these special pots that had the mounting brackets pointing to the front. And uh, that's why that's why I called them weird. And, and I've, I've kind of I haven't looked very uh, very much in depth yet. But uh, these are going to be a little bit difficult to find. So uh, here's what I want to try to do. Let's see if any of you can guess what I'm going to try to do. And yes, I'm going to try to take the shafts and glue them back on. Super glue them back on. The pots turn. I mean, these guys turn pretty easily, so there's not going to be a lot of rotational torque on any of this. I think the biggest stress to them is when, uh, not when you're putting on the knob, but when you're trying to pull it off. Because it's going to try to pull the whole shaft off and whatever glue joint you have may fail at that point. But uh, <laughs> maybe I'll just super glue the uh, knobs to the shaft so nobody can ever pull them out, if that works of course. But uh, let's let's gain access. I think I'm going to take the front plate off of this and then see if we can just artifact electronics repair these. If at least we get to a point where we have the pot shafts all available, plug it in and can test every function of this thing. Pulled all the knobs off. Thankfully, they're not the set screw types, but rather they have spline shafts, so they all came off. And then what we need to do is get rid of the front plate. Oh, don't fall, don't fall. So there you have it. Now we have access to the shaft. Alright. So the first thing you got to do is of course find the right shaft for the right part. This one's easy because it's the longest of them all. And, uh, and that one fits, of course, on the one that has the shortest length of shaft left on it. It's also broke off at an angle so to make it really easy to rotationally place it properly on here. These two are going to be a little bit more difficult to match up exactly. But, okay, there are clues. There are holes in the middle, but this one has kind of a larger diameter hole than these two. And we can clearly see that this one, broken off shaft, has the same kind of larger diameter hole in it. So, this one goes here. And I just got to figure out how to rotate it so it fits back exactly 
how it was when it broke when it broke off and yeah that kind of like wire memory it tells me that so of course the remaining guy is this guy and uh, he fits on here Got to be careful with gluing it because <clears throat> there's no room left for glue to seep out of the glue joint because then the knobs won't fit. Actually, it's interesting. Let's see how far the, those knobs go on. And uh, so essentially, these two broke exactly at the uh, at the rim of the knob, so I got to be real careful not to let anything seep out, any glue seep out and prevent it, clog up the spline, <clears throat> so the buttons go back in. This one I have some leeway because it broke near the pot itself, but anyway as a first try what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some super glue on it and uh, let it dry for a while and then before putting any knobs on, I'm just going to make sure that I can turn the shafts by hand and plug it in to see if it even works. If that is the case, then we'll try to figure out how to put the knobs back on and how to replace the busted knob. So here are the fruits of my labor. I glued them together and uh, let them sit for about an hour, even though super glue should bond much before that, but better safe than sorry. So here you can turn them. So we seem to have a pretty good bond. Unfortunately I didn't get all the shafts in totally straight because you know how things work in the 3D world. You're looking at it from a certain angle and it looks straight. You put the glue on, put your finger on it to let it set and then you take your finger off and you turn it. It, be it turns wobbly. Let's see, can you see that on this one? Yeah, this is kind of wobbly but, but hey it's in there, at least we got all the knobs in there, and now we can go ahead <clears throat> and test it to see if it even works or if other nasty stuff has happened to it. I did go ahead and reseat all of the chips because everything in here, yeah, everything in here is socketed. Nothing seemed loose, nothing, nothing seemed to be out of the way, so yeah, let's plug a controller keyboard in and see how she performs. So this is actually going to be a double test because I'm using this guy which had all of the PCBs ripped off or sheared off. I'm just using it in MIDI mode right now but uh, we got MIDI coming in, we got audio coming out and uh, AC so all well, made noise. For reference, these are the three pots that were glued. And uh, let's Uh, 
feel the frequency knob. Doesn't seem to have survived. There's a bunch of dead spots on here. And the filter sounds funny anyway. Yeah, this is the best. Generally, it seems to work. I need to adjust and or fix the filter and probably replace this pot because uh, it, the response is, is pretty non-continuous on it. Other than that, just uh, checking through a few of the other functions on this. Let's go back into into a uh, sawtooth. And let's modulate the frequency. Sawtooth, we have to do that on the square. So it's modulating the pulse width of the uh, square wave over here. VCO can be set to generate noise. And keyboard tracking is off right now. Doesn't seem to do a whole lot, but wait, if we turn up the envelope. Try the envelope generator itself. Let's turn the attack really slow. Ah, too late. So yeah, generally things seem to be working, but there's, I think there's something wrong with the filter. It's, it's not just the pot. The pot may have some dead spots, but it should work okay. But uh, the uh, waveform sound kind of gritty on it. So I'm going to have to go through the uh, service manual and see how to adjust the filter properly, which I suspect is the problem. And somewhere down the road, I'm going to have to get a new frequency pot, which obviously got hammered here. But hey, at least let's put it back together. Doesn't work fully, but works enough and come up with a solution for the knobs. So here we are with the whole thing put back together again. I have to cut the skirts off some of the broken knobs. Every, every knob works. 
the shafts still work. They are these three pots, which I've marked. And uh, yeah, everything turns. And uh, do I dare pull off one of the knobs that's on a glued uh, shaft? Sure, why not? And it came off. But these knobs look horrible. Uh, I gotta replace the knobs, find a source for these knobs. But uh, first, let me go through my box of parts and see if I have any splined knobs that I can pull, put on here. And maybe give this thing a little more color. Oh yes, and before I forget, I checked on eBay. There's a fellow in the UK selling these knobs, exact replacements. Uh, they are ten dollars each. One, two, three, four, five knobs. Fifty dollars. Let's go and see what I have. Well, here she is, sporting the new spring colors. I'm sure some of you may have comments on uh, what or how good this looks. I know purists will definitely insist on these knobs, but as I was taking off the knobs, there's actually a total of six bad knobs, uh, $60. Maybe... Uh, Stocks. If the stock market recovers, I'll consider buying them. But for now, I uh, this is what she's going to look like. Uh, these knobs came out of my inventory. They were like, I don't know, less than ten cents each for so for about a buck fifty. It's got new buttons on it. Still needs to have the uh, VCF frequency checked, uh, and that pot probably needs to be replaced. But that'll happen. I'm not going to get into fixing the, uh, the filter because generally my audience hasn't shown a whole lot of interest in repairs and electrical repairs on this, but this was a special occasion. And as I said before, since uh, my lack of finding new equipment to repair has decreased the frequency of, frequency of my videos, I thought I'd use the earthquake as an excuse to make another video. It is a repair after all, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and uh, click on notifications. Leave me a comment what you think about the whole thing and what you think about the color scheme. I actually like it. Uh, it takes some getting used to after you've seen every single piece of duck for equipment with the same color knobs uh, in, the, in the tens on, on sequences and stuff like that. but. That'll make it pop, as they say in the uh, automotive world. A thumbs up would also be appreciated, and we'll see you real soon. Stay healthy.